All right, guys, coming to the end of the day, you got to remember, I have to, I have to make the valves. What do you mean by make the valves? Well, the valves were bought as 194 16s for a 6000s. Nice valve. It's, it's a higher PM engine by a decent valve. I had to cut down the intake to a 1.9 and the exhaust to about a 1.54. Five, four, five, right around there. Give or take a couple thousands. Had to do that to all of them. Put a nice fat radius on the exhaust, which does help flow. Notice how thick the margin is. I did have to grind a wider seat on it because by the time you shrink it, there was practically no seat. So... The intake, same deal. You got to machine the side. You got to redo the face. And that just gets a slight angle. I do it with the belt. The belt sander. As far as our liquid, this is number four. Looks pretty much like what we've had. And, you know, they really should. They should be pretty darn close. Our valve looks basically the same as we had last time. Let's see what the bore looks like. Pretty much the same thing that we had last time. Looks pretty good. You can just see a slight bit of blue on the right side of that guide. We haven't really been checking that. You can go down the aisle. If I could get it to focus. See, I really don't see any blue through the camera on three as far as uh, on the right side of the guide really don't see anything on the right side of the guide I really don't see anything on the right side of the guide interesting now this port did have a little bit strange anomaly when uh, it first started to lift we're going to go over that Okay, the strange anomaly is only with the intake manifold, so that tells me it's probably more like, more likely, it, it messed with our swirl a little bit, probably due to the intake manifold. So this is what we got. We got number four. We're going to look against number three. How close is it? That's pretty close. Pretty close. Pretty close. Pretty close. Charlie, how do you get them so close? Well... You do a lot of measuring, and you try to make them as, as similar to each other as you can. Does that mean they always work that way? No, they, they don't. I mean, if we look at the air speeds, they're not going to be the same. Let's do the swirl first. Okay, relatively dead. Okay, we got plenty when, when, we, when we go up. Now, this one was a little bit different. See, it was a little more progressive. Okay. Now, we're going to go, and we're going to take a look at... What the intake did through the manifold carb, and I didn't mention it, but all of these are being tested through that uh, Wilson four-hole spacer, four-hole tapered. The manifold was actually designed for that. Okay, this is number three. This is number four. We're comparing these flows to these flows. How do we do? Pretty close. Pretty darn close. Hmm, slacking a little bit there. Slacking, slacking. This was one of our best, I think this was our best flowing. Okay. But, in reality, I think it flows almost exactly the same as number one did. This is a little strange. We had a reversal on our swirl. So we started with a lot of swirl. Whereas here, it had a decent amount as well. But then we go backwards in two spots, and then it goes to zero, and then it starts to pick up and then lose it on the short side. The swirl here is actually a bit lower than I'd like to see it. Not much I can do about it. That's The intake is the intake. As far as, uh, what was that intake flowing? It's like 287. That intake is flowing. So we're getting 236.7 out of it. Not terrible. Not as good as this side. Let's take a look at our airspeeds. That's three. 
that's four. Pinch is almost identical. The roof is a little bit slower on this, but our short side is more efficient because we got 360 right here. That is probably why we have that reversal on our swirl, because the short side works better on this side of the bowl, probably due to casting thickness more than anything else. I was able to give it a little more... I shouldn't even say. But the way I was able to do the short side was more even from side to side. Okay. Okay, number three exhaust and number four exhaust. Number four exhaust works a little bit better everywhere. Decent, decent dist uh, difference. 160, 170, 180, 190. 164, 171, 185, 194. This port is more like all the other ports. I'm not sure what was going on with that port. Maybe something I'll look at. I'll take a look at it, but I don't know if I'm really going to change much. Like I said, that exhaust port design is not great. I know the heights are all the same on, on the, the exhausts. I know all the, the widths are the same. So where is it getting the extra flow from? Oh, well, that's a good question. Does that look like a whole day's work? Well, it is. Making up valves, making sure all the valve seat heights are right where I want them. Making sure the valve seat widths are where I want them. Flow testing everything and then flow testing it all through the intake manifold, carb spacer, and carb. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Oh, by the way, I think we're doing pretty good if our our lowest flowing. All right, number one was our lowest flowing at 600. We got 231. 600, we got 232. Pretty darn close. Pretty darn close. At 600 on our best flowing one. 240. Still not bad, guys. I don't care what anybody says. For a dual plane intake, I think that's pretty good. I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever seen uh, a series quite like this where someone goes through a head and tests everything like this. So, hope you like it. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.